with all the big calls on all the big races. Who's feeling champion ahead of this weekend? Yes, it's Champions Day, the crescendo of the flat season. Pretty much as we know, it comes to Ascot. Here we are. Let's go. Six races on the card. Five big races coming your way with myself, Dave Orton. Delighted to be back for another edition of What a Shout. Filmed somewhere in the capital on a Friday morning. Wow, with our sponsors, Bet365. I'm looking forward to this. We're keeping it all in-house today. Why? Because, let's face it, with the panellists we've got, we can go on and on and on about these races. Get your comments in below. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. Facebook, welcome along to the party. And, of course, anything you want to say on Twitter is hashtag what a shout. Okay, now we've got a debutant on the panel. You'll recognise him, a lot of you, but we need to introduce Tom Park back in. It shows the way the world's going, Parky, that you've come back in. It's great to have you on, man. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait. Really excited. Weekly's editor. Is that the bit that probably that's gone under your name there? Possibly, yeah. I mean, I, What does that entail? Was it, uh, I'm in charge of the, uh, the Weekender and the Racing Football Outlook um, that come out every week. So if you've not bought them, buy one. Yeah, all right. And the man that's always in them to his left, wow. Kills is back. Yeah, well, well, one of them the weekend. And and you are great mates as well, Kills, aren't you? Oh yeah, Parky, yeah, lovely good top bloke, went to his wedding. Now, I was gonna I was gonna get this out. Well, let's do a little introduction with Parky before we go to Pat Cooney, who's somewhere out there. Uh, you went to his wedding, which was on Great St. Wilfred Day, right? It was, yeah. I remember because the next week you came in saying, oh, I went to, back to reception, I tipped everyone something. And I said to Parky, what was that this morning? He goes, I don't know, because we all bat Lampang. Yeah, which right, is... I tipped the Lampang, it was useless, yeah. I didn't say I tipped the winner. <laughs> the reason why I'm saying that, because all our regular viewers were going, not Lampang again, kills. It was absolute, yeah, it was absolute garbage, yeah. But yeah. We, had a, we had a good time. I mean, uh, Tom's now wife from Inter, she was Enable's biggest fan. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, just literally, she would have gone around the world to see her. Yeah, we, uh, let's tease it a little bit again. Y you, uh, you have put something together for us in the last couple of weeks. It's just been a journey for you, but we're extremely excited about what's coming out on Monday, right? Yeah, we've got a massive supplement uh, called the Big Jump Off. Be a bit like the Big Kick Off for anyone who's read that on the, the Premier League starting. Yeah. But yeah, this is everything jumps racing. Um, we've got features galore from all of the top people at the Racing Post. We've got external people like Patrick Mullins, we've got James Willoughby in there, Nick Luck, um, Paul Nichols has made a contribution. The great and the good then of the racing world. Yeah, absolutely. We've got, we, it, whatever you want for the jump series, we've got it covered. It's going to be, it should be a really good read. He didn't mention us there, did he? No, <laughs> didn't, no, 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 we yeah. are also on the tin, believe it or not. We're just, we're just staffers, aren't we? That's <laughs> exactly. It. I believe your keyboard's been burning kills, but we'll be getting back to that. Yeah. Really looking forward to that. And you're the man for the job, Parky, because you are really bad. I mean, you're flat, everything. You love all your sports, don't you? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but jump racing in particular, your dog is called? Uh, my dog is called Kato. Uh, now, I know that's not how you pronounce it before we get on to it, but, <laughs> you know. I know, I've done a video call with you and he's been barking all over you. I've had that with you to <laughs> suffer yeah, that in the past. It should have been called Q card to be fair. Well, it? yeah, it doesn't yeah. quite have the same ring. I was a Q card kid on Twitter, but we have called it called <laughs> Kato instead. And there you go. All right, so we're off and running here, cooking with gas and great to have Tom. He's going to give us some great insights and he's got some big opinions, let's put it that way. Uh, Patrick Cooney, you are out there somewhere. Welcome back, Pat. Yes, uh, hello to everyone. Uh, in sunny Stoke-on-Trent today, Ascot Saturday, and Kempton over the jumps. I'm getting into the jumps mode myself on Sunday, all being well. Yeah, well, it is that time of year, Pat, isn't it? We've got one foot mm. in both camps, but this show in particular, we're honing in on Champions Day. Let's see to have a look at exactly what's coming up for you then. We're hot topics are back, I can tell you that. We'll be going through them. Uh, there are some big ones in there, very, very much so. Looking forward to that. Then, of course, five big race previews coming your way. All the group races, no doubt. Don't worry, you'll get a tip in the Balmoral along the way. That's the last race on the card on Saturday. And, of course, those are important weekend winners. Let's get stuck into some hot topics for you. It's been a big, big news week, hasn't it? Very much so. Let's get them up. On the screen, see the six beauties coming your way. Who are the panellists going to pick this week? Right, Trevor Hemmings at the top. Sad loss of the, of course, the, the powerhouse owner. Uh, we'll be talking about Trevor, I'm sure. To the wire, Oshin Murphy versus William Buick. Who ever thought it would have gone this close? Bumper woes. Are there too many bumpers in the UK and Ireland? Big jump off. Let's guess whether which one Parky will be going for. And stuck in the middle with you. That's like, have you got one foot in the flat campaign or are you now switching to the jumps? And the boys in blue. We sort of tease that we're choosing these, but uh, we're <laughs> <laughs> the big jump off, my man. Talk to us about it. What can people expect on Monday? Well, as I said, we've got a 72-page supplement, um, all dedicated to the start of the jump season. There'll be 
big focus on all of the meetings. Um, I'll quickly run through you the names because it's Go a for magnificent. It. You'll need your phone for this, will you? Yeah, I will. There's so many that I, don't, I really don't want to forget anyone. So we have, starting from the top, Paul Keeley to my left. Oh, he's, he's got it. After the little dig earlier, kills his on top. <laughs> yeah, so we've got Tom Siegel, Patrick Mullins, Paul Nichols, James Willoughby, Katie Walsh, Richard Johnson, Keith Melrose, Chris Cook, Lee Mottershead, David Jennings, Gavid Lynch, Lizzie Kelly, Nick Luck, Graham Rodway, Dave Orton. Hey. Steve Mason, Tom Collins, and more. They are, we'll all, they'll all be contributing in some shape or form. Yeah, and it's fair to say this has been not a labour of love, Parky, but this is something that you were given to do, and it's the first time we've ever done this, right? And it's obviously, as you mentioned at the top of the show, mirroring the you know, football season. We saw the idea, how popular it was. The appetite for this jump season, I've been saying it for the last couple of weeks, the kills as well. It's never been greater, has it? No, yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, look, we, everyone loves the jump racing, don't they? Especially um, in Britain and Ireland. Um, we've got the Olympics of horse racing, let's face it. I know there's a lot of talk about whether this season's focus about Cheltenham too much or whatever, but we should celebrate the fact that we've got the Cheltenham Festival. And you know, a lot of sports are envious of the fact that we've got Cheltenham Festival um, as, this, as this big kind of showpiece yeah. um, but it isn't all about Cheltenham um, and we've got the whole season covered we've actually got a section in the in the pullout which covers all of the big meetings um, in some shape or form starting with the November meeting yeah. at Cheltenham going through the Christmas period that's the traditional thing. start kills isn't it for the purists out there the open well meeting. I mean I think next week is isn't it right, if some yeah, people the October well, meeting yeah all right. Oh, I mean I some mean, people yeah, say it's already yeah. happened at Chepstow first yeah yeah I mean the Chepstow the Chepstow meeting was pretty good actually wasn't it like, yeah. oh, it, was, it was a real good card but I mean you know you know, everyone's spiritual home when they're jump racing fan is Cheltenham. So the first Cheltenham meeting of the season is the one that that really gets you going. But obviously the the um, the, um, the November meeting gets gets kicks it up a notch. Proper it? exciting, like, you know isn't I mean? it? The Irish get involved, don't they? Got good card at Bunches Town as well. It's going to be fantastic as well to see. It's been so long since we've seen a big crowd at Cheltenham. Unbelievable. Um, that's going to be brilliant to see. And yeah, look, we we look set for a really really good jump season. Um, there was a piece that Steve Mason did on RPRs and we highlight the 16, there's only 16 horses since RPRs began in 1988 that have achieved a rating of 180 or higher. And last year we had four horses who achieved 178 or above so that we had um, Clanders Obo, Alaho. And Alaho, they were 178 and then we have um, Manella Indo and Chacan Poissoir who, um, and it's, the fact that we've got the Gold Cup and the Champion Chase, and then you've, you throw in the likes of Shishkin and Ergamin, who are capable of clocking big figures, yeah. we could be set for a one hell of a brigade. season. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And who's the one? This is interesting. Let's get this out of the way. This is what punters want to, you know, and, and our regular viewers will be like, come on, all the nuggets that you've got before Monday. There's one horse you said to me at the start of the show when we were coming in and getting ready that you would back if you were having an anti-post bet for now for Jones. It's not who you think it's going to be. Yeah, I really like Shaq and Poissoir. I, I, I think they got the tactics really wrong in the champion chase. It was it just really didn't suit him and riding in him a lot more prominently at Punchestown. I mean, he, he was a completely different animal. And if you go off his performances before the champion chase, it's, he's, a, he's a proper horse. And yeah. I know Shishkin's very good and Anergamine are very good, but let's face it, they are only beating novices yet. And... What would what would Chak and Poswa have done to them horses last year? They'd have probably won by just as easy, if not easier. Yeah, well, here we are, the eve of Champions Day, as we film on this Friday, and we could go on and on and on about this. Kills you without telling them. Do not tell them. You've put up one of the bets of the recent seasons in it as well, haven't you? Yeah, there is, and it's not at Cheltenham. No. Uh, so I'll leave it there because I can tell you're desperate yeah, wait, to go into wait it. And see, you just want to tell you know, I want to tell you what it is, but I mean, you won't yeah. find a better bet this side of uh, the New Year. There you go. All right, then. That's the big jump off. Uh, there's also a video preview of it coming out on Monday as well with yours truly and a few others on it. Kills absolutely goes mental on that one. You can't miss it. All right, let's get back to the hot topics then. Um, Pat, let's go to you. What about the boys in blue? Let's give you this one. Are you Caribus or are you Native Trail? Well, I'm more Caribus than Native Trail, and I was lucky to be at Newmarket last week. And these, these horses are absolute giants, you know. When you see them walking around the parade ring, in the back of my mind, I think, oh, I wouldn't want to see these fellas on fast ground, really fast ground. But uh, both of them handled the dip. They ran away really well. I just think Caribus has got more of the wow factor about him than Native Trail. I think Native Trail is progressing very well. 
But Karibas, he's just got more be, more about that magic about him as well. And one, one of the other problems, that, well, not a problem, but you look at um, Native Trails breeding, he's by Oasis Dream. So as Oasis Dream was a sprint, I'm not sure how far he'll stretch out. So he's gone the seven furlongs well enough. The mile won't be too much of a problem for him. So I think Karibas is the type of horse he can get, go further and have more Group 1 options. But both of them are real top-notchers. Whether or not they're the best horse around remains to be seen. Aidan O'Brien's got the current Derby favourite, Luxembourg, who runs at Doncaster in the Futurity next week. So as exciting as the jumps are, these two-year-olds are really uh, getting uh, the pulses uh, quickening. OK, that's the, that's the unabated flat fan then getting that out of the way. There is a social media storm brewing uh, and there is excitement for the year ahead. Nature Trail or Caribus. A kills are in the same powerhouse operation. Where are you going? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those. Visually, you like Caribus, um, and I do like Caribus, but, you know, at the moment, you know, it's undeniable that Native Trail has got the better form. I mean, you know, he, he took apart that Dewhurst. It was, it was obviously a much better race uh, uh, than the Autumn or, Stakes. Autumn Stakes, yeah, that's when I was the Royal Lodge. Lodge was yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember Royal Lodge, got beat him, wasn't it? Um, you know, a visual impression, he just looked really good. But you've got to remember, he was beating far weaker horses than Native Trail was. Now, yeah. I, I think going forward, I do like Caribus. I think Native Trail is an absolute certainty to get a mile. Mm. Uh, he finishes it so strongly. His splits were considerably better closing than uh, than Caribus's were. So, you know, I mean, he's got it in the book at the moment. But I think Caribus is still a big baby. Yes. Like, you know, and Physically, it, apparently, he really it, looks the part. He does, it more, he, does it, he does it more immediately. But, I mean, you know, you, to, you know... You, Let's, let's take a top class jumper and his example. Altior needed a bit of rousting before he hit top gear, and that's your native trail. Yeah. He needs to warm up, but when he hits it, yeah. uh, and then it's you know it's irresistible. So you know I don't know, but I, you know, for you you're sitting on the fence. Yeah, no, a bit no, odd. Visually, I mean I said I said straight on Twitter afterwards when Bruce, Bruce put something out saying how good native trail was. I said I think Caribus is going to be better. Mm, but it's in cold light of day, Native Trail has the better form at the moment. On this show last week, we were previewing that race, right, at uh, the Autumn Stakes. And when he got beaten in the Royal Lodge, Pat Cooney was going up to Charlie Appleby, the Fernand Pole, pat him on the shoulder and go, nice when he got one for next year. <laughs> and he curls up and gets beaten. Of course, Royal Patronage <laughs> is the horse that we're all sort of, he's the elephant in the room here, isn't it? Because he was thrashed by Native Trail on his debut at Sandown. He's the line horse that we're going through. Is he a good horse? Or, or, I guess we could uh, t uh, digress there. Parky, Caribus or Native Trail? Let's keep it simple. Yeah, Caribus for me as well. I think clean sweep. For, I, I echo what uh, both the lads have said. Um, I think they're two opposite styles, which what what makes this such an exciting matchup. Um, Caribus, I, I'm more for the flashy kind of strong travelling. You type. love a bit of that. And then they usually get beat by a real <laughs> grinder like Native Trail. So I mean, if we got running this weekend, yeah, absolutely. Listen, I'm Native Trail all the way. He's a beast. I do see the physical improvement for Caribus and the fact that Charlie came out before. The Royal Lodge and said, well, it might be better than Native Trail, but the form of that Jewhurst just looks absolutely brilliant, doesn't it? Yeah. Our I mean, horse is probably very good. He is, 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 is the best race. He's beating the champion it, it, stakes winner, the Coventry stakes winner in fourth. It's yeah, yeah. top stuff. Yeah, it is the it yeah. is the best race, isn't it? The best bit of form, no doubt. Uh, but who comes on? I mean, obviously, Quibus has only had the three runs, and he yeah. was still a big baby when he got beat. I mean, that was, you know, you could call it an ill judged ride, but I mean, it was just a case they didn't know the horse. <laughs> they just didn't know the horse. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it yeah. would be tempting to link now to, to yeah. the wire. I mean, it's with funny, the... everyone keeps saying that, you know, Native Trail hits the line really hard and Caribus doesn't, but Caribus is one who's probably bred to get a little bit further yeah. than Native Trail is. And he goes through his races, obviously, yeah. without that flat spot, doesn't he? Yeah. Which Native Trail, we love the way he got out of trouble. We could go on, Parky. Time is of the essence, my man. Uh, so let's let's throw it to Kills now. Bumper Woes, talking about time. I'm not sure how long we got to listen to the man on this. Great take in the week. His comment in the paper was... Yeah, why don't we halve the number of bumpers uh, that, that are run? Uh, like I saw a few people on Twitter and saying, oh, how ridiculous is this and that. And I, you know, when you look at it, I mean, it was a perfectly good argument. He said when he joined the Racing Post, and again, the Racing Post database goes back to 88, there were 62 bumpers in Britain then. There's now 310. He used to average 20 runners. They now average less than 10. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I said, you, I actually went on there and I said, well, you should quarter and someone come back. Well, how, how do we teach these horses about the hustle and bustle of racing? But you know, when you look at it, half the bumper horses are running points anyway. Mm. Now, I don't understand, right? We are, you know, we are jumps fans. All right? If you're a jumps fan, why are you so fascinated with bleeding flat races? Yeah, okay. What's all that about? I'll have to stop. Honestly, he, uh, he could go on and on you know, and on. If we hadn't have got these grade one bumpers at the end of the season, there would be at least half. A great right. link for Parky because you, you, I mean, despite the fact you've got Q Card Kid as your Twitter handle, yeah, everyone's out there following you right now, 
You don't really like them either, do you? I just, I think the Champion Bumper itself is just a complete, it's a real backwards way of doing things. You've got horses who have been over jumps in the point-to-point -point world. and Learning how to be a flat sudden, horse. And the, it's the Champion Bumper that kind of keeps them doing that. Fair enough, earlier in the season, have a few races for them to get the swing of things. I absolutely get that. But from the turn of Christmas, move the Champion Bumper to... Leopardstown yeah. or to Kempton at Christmas. We do expect, don't we, the end of every single jumps card there to be a bumper. It's just natural to expect that, isn't it? So you're putting the boot in. There you go. You'll be welcome back anytime. Well, you know, <laughs> let's say appreciate it running the champion bumper, obviously. Yeah. Uh, well, Kilcrut yeah. and Sir Gerhard are the two take yeah, from appreciate, appreciate it won the Supreme Novices yeah. Hurdle as a seven year old. Yeah. Now, many of the best Gold Cup winners in history you won the Gold running Cup over fences as a seven year old. Yeah. And we're just delaying the progression. Yeah. They're running in epoxy flat races. Something that, tells it. me that's going to get our viewers going as well. Let's, let's go to Pat Cooney for a final word on that. Get your comments in below, viewers. Pat, from a bookmaker's point of view, bumpers? Meh. Yeah. Uh, they're all low turnover races, aren't they? I often think uh, they help ease the traffic, don't they, being as the last race of the card? Not really a betting medium for me. i, t I tell you one thing I'm, I'm always uh, uh, amazed by. The bumper at Worcester is normally the middle race on the card. You know, you normally if you're a sponsor, race four is probably going to be the race you'd want to sponsor. It's always a bumper there. I, I, I can never understand that one either. Track, but... <laughs> portable fences and hurdles. Well, they have to move them around, don't they? It's, it's yeah. when they switch from hurdles yeah, to fences. They start but... with chases, don't they? Yeah, so they, get, they do. Yeah. Bit of all to watch there it. is obviously a logistical reason for it, but maybe just don't have the bumper. Yeah. You know, it's that simple, isn't it? All right, we could have gone Correct. on about that. That's going to be a standalone clip without question. Guys, we can't not have a word about Trevor Hemmings on this, so let's talk about the great man. It's been a seismic year, isn't it, for the loss of owners in the sport? You know, Khalid Abdullah, for example, shake hand down on the flat, massive. Yeah. And here we are, Trevor Hemmings. Yeah, well, one of the great, uh, you know, jumps um, fanatics, if you will, absolute love affair with Aintree, um, you know, managed to win the Grand National. How sad is it we're not going to see those colours in it? Uh, yeah, we're not going to see those colours. Uh, you'd, you'd hope you would. But well, I mean, I, I'm sure that there yeah. will be some sort of family just like the pots. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully there is. I mean, you'd be horrible to lose, to lose those colours. I mean, you know, I spent, you know, 10 years working on the sports desk with Bruce with Bruce Millington before he became uh, before he became editor, but we'd sit there watching the racing, and he'd say, you know, I'd say, what have you backed in this? And I'd just go Trev's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I mean, we were, we were on Trev's charge. And uh, you know. not a bad word spoken. Obviously, we know that the colour of the man. We did lovely pieces on it this week in the Post, and that's that's not to as a blow our own trumpet. It, 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 it seemed perfectly fitting. Favourite Hemmings horse then? This is we're at the end of the week now with uh, the news. Um, no brainer for me was Alberta's run. RSA winner, Jewel Ryanair winner. Uh, just really tough, really yeah. tough. Love Cheltenham. Give us a dark okay. one then, Bob. I absolutely love this horse. Um, he still love this horse. He's still in training. Vintage Clouds. Um, yeah. Kind of never get him right. That horse never. Well, I didn't get him right at Cheltenham. Believe it or not, I um, I must have. Back this horse was. I used to say on the podcasts a lot of the time this horse was going to pay for my wedding by winning the Grand National um, I'm absolutely sure he would have won a Grand National if he you're could absolutely broke offenses. as well are you <laughs> yeah yeah that's it I would, and then it got to Cheltenham and um, yeah I didn't even bring myself to uh, I had my responsible gambling hat on and didn't even bring myself to have a save on him but I still roared him up the hill um, he's a brilliant brilliant horse um, I love him I just think just love Tries so hard, slow as anything, but tries really hard. And um, yeah, that, it, it, those kind of horses, I think, will always be. The big yeah. store horses he used to buy, Pat, didn't he? Of course, Chives was one of mine. We talked to the guys earlier. Remember him? Go back and look. If you're new to the game or you're young or whatever, Chives is. Henry at night used to have loads of Trevor Hemmings horses, the old types, and never quite got him right, but I had that sort of cliff with him. Uh, obviously, many clouds, as I said. Pat, you got a Trevor horse? Uh, I thought Trebolgan was always a top class horse. He had a mixed CV ultimately, but you know he he won the uh, the, the Sun Alliance, looking like a future Gold Cup winner. Then he came out and won the Hennessy. It didn't quite work for him, but I always thought he had some engine when he was right. But uh, yeah, very famous colours, and we've all backed horses of his on a regular basis over the years, haven't we? So it'll be a big loss to the to the sport. Yeah, a seismic loss then to the jumps game, and uh, gone but not forgotten. Trevor Hemmings. 125 at Ascot, the first of six absolute pearlers coming your way. It's Champions Day. How are we all feeling about it? Pat Cooney, you're going to be there. Who's going to be the fav in the long distance? It's obviously going to be Trujan if he turns up. Yeah, well, Trujan will be favourite. Um, he's currently around about a six to four chance. Stradivarius has been popular. He sits there around about three. And then it's six bar. But 
I think this is a sort of race, you know, where bookmakers can smell a result. You know, we've had this debate with Adair, uh, Charlie Appleby backing him up two weeks after the pre de l'Arc de Triomphe. Well, these two, Trushan and Stradivarius, ran over a mile further on really testing ground and had a long, drawn-out, storming finish. Both of those two must have come home feeling a little bit tired. So maybe we can get them both beat. I think it's a sort of race, you know, Trushan, not, not 100% sure about him. Stradivarius, we're always thinking about he's going to retire any day soon. So it's, we could get them both beat here. That, I think that you, I think a, a few of the shrewdies will be looking at an each way angle here and back in a couple at big prices. I actually thought a horse that also ran in that race, Princess Zoe, might be of interest. She travelled ever so well for two miles, and then nothing happened in the last half a mile of the race. So she's an eight to one chance. She was half that price two weeks ago, and she was second in the Ascot Gold Cup. She'll be valued, but I think we might get them both beat. That's a bold thing to say, but possibly we would do. Yeah, all right. The bookmaker sniffing defeat for Trushan. Uh, the kills, let's come to you. Pacey, Pacey will keep this because win or lose, six to four. Kadran's the key. Where are we going? Uh, yeah, well, this is this is the problem, isn't it? It's two weeks ago. It's on every ground. Now, Order of St George won this race in 2017, having run fourth in the arc, but he had 20 days to recover and he'd only run over a mile and a half. A year earlier, He'd run in the arc, but only had 13 days to recover, and he got beat at odds of four to six. It's a, it's a tough turnaround. Mm. It really is. And they have gone hammer and tongs, those two. Uh, I mean, they, they were level for an, an entire furlong in the he's straight. A, he's hardly turned up this year, though, has he? I mean, we've had uh, G-Rod in this studio recently going, it's a disgrace of a campaign. He's won on good ground, all this sort of thing. Everyone hates Stradivarius. Yeah, I know, but they also, you, know, you know what trainers are like. It's got to be absolutely perfect. He run, he'll run. definitely run. He's soft good at soft in places. Still. How, Kills? Can we talk about this? You're our weatherman. Oh, I'm well, not just a weatherman. I walk a dog in the morning. Yeah. Like, and you can That's your barometer, how, yeah. You can tell just how much heavy dew there is. Like, you know what I mean? I'm absolutely drenched when I, when, when I come over. But like, Kempton like, on like, Sunday with the jumps, you know. Yeah, but they haven't watered it all, all year, have they? Yeah, right. Like, you know so this I mean? is this it. Is other, this is the other thing. Like, it would, it, you know, guarantee you that that the inside track at Ascot would be firm, good to firm, yeah. at, the very, at the very worst. But it's drawing, isn't it? 2016, yeah. when we ran this meeting, all the good things won, didn't they? Uh, yeah, the first, for, for, for the first time. But, you know, I don't, you know... Overall, you get a lot of favourites beaten in this race, and a lot of the favourites, yes, they get beaten on soft ground, but they're favourites on soft ground because they handle it. Yeah, you're taking him on, aren't you? you know, I'm, take, I, I, I'm taking him on, yeah, definitely. With? Baron Samady. Mm. Now, I, I, think he's got a, I think he's got a massive chance. He won, Globe trotting He Samady. won the two mile Belmont Gold Cup um, earlier in the season. He'd come back from a break, ran third to Sunny by Liston in the Irish Ledger. Uh, and he, he was never stronger than at the death. He was gaining on them. Okay, they were two and a half lengths clear, but he was, you know, he was really strong at the death then. Uh, I think Search for a Song was fourth or fifth. She come out and absolutely slaughtered Mediterranean next time out. Who's, you know, yep. obviously in the field. Uh, and I think it's, you know, I think it's almost an each way bet. It's nothing. Amazingly, Joseph O'Brien, um, this horse was. Rated 65 in September last year. It's a Mark Prescott type. Uh, you know what I mean? Incredible. Uh, yeah. But handles any ground, stays forever, and uh, it just looks like he's been absolutely laid out for it. The Baron then for Kills. Now, you're not with Trusha, but you do like one of the big two. You're keeping the faith. Yeah, it's more of a... I've kind of looked at this race, um, trying to find an each-way angle. I'm just not sure anything is quite... I, I appreciate that that was a hard race that they had in the Cadran. Um, but I am going to give Stradivarius, he's going to bow out in spectacular style. Well, maybe not spectacular, but I think he might win today. Um, I just think the ground will be a bit more in his favour than the Cadran. Get he out travelled, of it. He travelled oh, so Don't get him better. started. He's, he's been banging this drum for a <laughs> long time. I, I used to bang that drum, but then I watched him in... He travelled so well, and then when he was asked... To pick up, he's he certainly going to have no ground. problems with the drying ground. Against no, the I don't think so. He's normally been running against. Well, that, that, this, that, that debate will rage on. Is Kills right? Let, let, so who's yes. the who's the best out of Trushan and Tradavarius? Ding ding round three. I, it suggests I Trushan. It, yeah, I, I think Trushan needs it really soft, doesn't he? I mean, that would be it's quite um, a buzzy horse as well, isn't it? So it'd be interesting to see Holly back on. Obviously, we spoke to Holly last week, of course, and. Um, She's, she's, she still thinks it was there. They were arming and ironing whether to wait a little bit and go to the pre-Royal Oak, which is that one which G-Rod told us last week everyone forgets about back in France. Um, but the fact they're running is interesting. It's not a race I would... It, looking at the race as a whole, I probably wouldn't have a bet given it's Champions Day. 
Um, I probably will. You will bat Yeah, Stradivarius, and I yeah. probably will bat Stradivarius. I'll throw Hamish into the mix then. I'm a bit surprised you're not going for this chat. I uh, nearly did. Uh, it was just the fact that Baron Sanders is a slightly bigger price and he's already won over two miles. This is Hamish stepping up for it. Now, he's been injury prone, Hamish, isn't he? Yes, so, that's the only know, doubt I've got in my mind. One, but he's had six weeks off and obviously beat Hookham last. A bit of a shock, but Hookham's come out one of Cumberland Lodge by miles. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a solid bit of form. They'd be, they'd be my two. I mean, I'm, yeah. you know. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm doing the play spot, I am Hamish and Baron Samady, and I'm trying to get the front two out. There you go. I'm definitely Hamish. When I saw the draw come out, stall one, Tom Marquand on ground saving right. What a perler it is, the long distance cup. Two o'clock, it is the group one sprint. All right. I say, I, I sort of sit pause there because there's 20 runners in it, Keels. And it's pretty hard to knock anything out. The first seven of the betting haven't won a group one previously. Exactly. Uh, 20 runner race, uh, four to one the field. Can you name off the top of your head the horse who is officially the best horse in the race? Well, Glen Shield can't be too far off last year's winner, can he? I would say Creative Force. See? No idea, have you? No. Nobody's got any idea. No. Gus Davis Westner. The Irish Raider. Officially rated 115. Finished six in the flying five last time. Uh, five furlong, no good for him. He's a six furlong horse. He's actually won quite, in quite a commanding fashion the last two times. He's, he's run over six furlongs. Group mm. two and group three races. But like we've said, None, none of these have won a, won a Group 1 race. Yeah. Uh, we are in danger of, because we've seen Dragon Symbol, Art Power, Rohan running week in, week out, and all these good races. We're in danger of thinking they're better than they actually are. Yeah. End of the day, highest rated horse in this race is 115. There is four pound between the best 13 horses in this race on official figures. It is wide open. I've backed Gustavus Weston uh, at a big price. I have backed Happy Romance who, mm. uh, three-year-old, just running into form, improving at the right time. Three-year-old filly, improving at the right time. Last three runs, uh, third to come from the dark at Standdown over five, wins to Hackwood at Newbury. A length fourth in the Sprint Cup, slightly impeded in a run before it was going. Finished ahead of Creative Force, finished ahead of Art Power, and is 20-odd to one. Yep. Um, Try the ground better for her, but she, I think she handles good, good and good at soft. And it, it's got to be nearly good by the by the day, isn't it? Just got to be. Uh, you know, so so that's my hopes. I might even chuck another, another couple of quid at Brando, who is sixth uh, appearance in this race. Six um, in well this done, race. the Ryan team. Um, Unbelievable. Eighty to one second beating a nose last year. He's thirty three to one yeah. shot. Well, they do think the bigger the field now, the better for Brando. Yeah, he's been second twice. He's been fourth twice. Yeah. Um, like, you know, so. You know, it's wide open. It's a race that's up for grabs. It wouldn't surprise me if Throw a few wide. darts at some big prizes. Yeah, I, that's what that's what I'm doing. Look, if you ask me which one I think is most likely winner out of all of them, I'd say probably Rohan, because I think he really likes Asker. Well, let's get and, to this. I mean, he was yeah. a massive eye-catcher in the Flying Five. Yeah, Pat will probably tell us he's been one of the movers in the race as well. well ha I mean, if he comes out the gates like that again, he's a million though, isn't he, Tom? I mean, the way that he finished so close, is it, what does it say for the race? I don't know, but it was a knock-your-eye-out run from Rohan. Where are you going? Yeah, I, I really like Minzal in this. Ah. Um, big, big fan. Um, put him up as a horse to follow this season. We haven't seen much of him. I'm not sure that worked, what, didn't what it? his setback. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, it did. for yeah. anyone who worked, followed the horse, yeah, he's uh, you've not seen much of him. But he can make up for lost time. Um, I thought it was a really, really good run against his marvelous last time over five furlongs. Step up to six, definitely going to suit him. Um, he was a very good two-year-old. Mm. Um, like probably sh his only defeat as a two year old was in the middle part probably you're going to say he's probably won that probably should have won that yeah I, th I thought he was unlucky on the day um, uh. I just think I think Keels is absolutely right it's not they're all clustered up this horse I think is towards the bottom of that I think he's 111 but I think he can improve um I think it'll improve plenty for that. It's just whether he can take the quick turn, a bit like Hamish, as we talked about in the Long Distance Cup. It's that second run back. But unlike Hamish, who won, this guy travelled, 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 then bottomed out as if he had a blow, didn't he? Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, it screamed as crying out for the run. Um, he was nibbled a bit in the betting, um, yeah. so... I just think he's a very good horse. Yeah. No draw has been important in this race. We're just about to go to Pat, who's going to give us all the updates and tell us we're mad or something like that. But when I saw Art Power come up in 20, I I'm going to be honest, I've been a bit of a turncoat here. I mean, you've put Art Power up countless amounts of times. So I'm like, yeah. I just don't get it. What I saw in Ireland last time, and they finally held on to him for a yeah, bit. Well, he got a more considered ride from the front. It, it was, it was the, the but, you know, our so. handicappers actually wrote in their notes the best ride he's got for a long time. Yeah. And so you don't put that into the analysis because it's mm. it's opinion. But these guys, <laughs> they're talking about having 
figured him up all the time. When I saw 20 come out, I'm it's like... A track. Well, it, it, it's the worry, and the, re the reason is, right, these heavy Jews, right, and a massive stand with a shadow, with a yeah. shadow coming across, right, the stand side is in the shadows for far longer. And than we saw what happened side. at the previous meeting, like, that it was all far and side. everyone wants to go over the far yeah. side, every no. single time. Right. Now, I mean, Escobar two years ago won the Balmoral from stall 21. It can be done. Most of the pace is high too. So I'll tell you through on Art Power what your saving grace is. Highfield Princess. She's married to that stands rail, isn't she, at Ascot? And she's mm. high. She's going to do one thing. I just wonder if she's quick enough to lead. I will be staggered if they don't all move off the rail. Oh, man, I'm on Art Power, Pat. <laughs> but they've come up They've come up the middle and it's been fine. What you don't want to be is under the bit that has been in the shadows for that long. It's, just, it's it, you know, it sounds ridiculous, but it's now a monster stand, isn't it, that goes yeah. all the way across. And uh, it's the last bit that sees any sun. This is why we've kept it in-house today, guys. No big guest out there, because we could talk, talk, talk. Let us know. What do you think? Are we right? Kiel says you're probably going to have to be low. Pat, what do you think? Not even mention Dragon Symbol. Well, it's amazing, isn't it? And, and don't be afraid to back a big price one here. The last three winners, 16, 33, and 28. It just looks that type of a race, doesn't it? The draw is going to be interesting. I think Rohan was certainly the eye-catcher last time out, and he is two runs, two wins at Ascot. Got Ryan Moore on, maybe a change of rider aboard. Ryan won on him the last time he rode him. So he's very much in the equation. And I keep trying to fancy Glenn Shield, you know, last year's winner. Disappointed last time, yes, undeniably. Uh, drawn in stall two, that could be good. Holly Doyle, blinkers first time. Maybe that one will be the one that will shorten up in the market, but we're going to be first four places on the race, and that's because we think it's an impossible race to solve. I think Rohan, provided he traps, Glenn Shield, if he takes to the blinkers, he would be overpriced for me. So uh, I'll lean towards Rohan, fingers crossed he breaks better. I think he might just go off favourite Rohan. What do you reckon? Give mm. us some help out there. Get your comments in below. 2.35 Ascot, race three on the card for you. It's the filly of mares, and I've been calling it the snowfall race, Tom, since she's defected from the Champion Stakes. No love, the bloods are wrong. She's going to go off odds on. Oh, i got a feeling they're going to dangle this one. Would you be tempted? Possibly. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, me saying now it's not really a race I'd be getting involved in. Um, snowfall is the best horse in the race. She's run in the art recently. Um, she ran a perfectly good race in the art. Should be good enough to beat the field. Um, would I be taking big odds on? Probably not. Will I get tempted by a uh, five to six? Hackers will be, won't they? You know, if, they, if you play your lucky 15s. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, only six uh, British or Irish trained horses have gone from the art meeting to win on Champions Days, but three of them did it in the Phillies and Mares. It, so, you think of magical, don't you, horses like that? Magical, uh, hydrangea and, yeah. and wonderful tonight. Thank you, Kills. Uh, and w it, are, are, are we looking at this? You know what it's like on Champions Day. People smell. They don't know why. They can smell a big upset, can't they, on Champions Day? Is yeah, this the, one thing of them? Is, the thing is, has she been found out? And even if she has been found out, is it going to matter against what she's running against? What because, price would she have been in the Champions Day? Uh, she'd have been uh, She'd have been fourth, third, fifth. She, so, probably, she probably would have been third, fifth. She's odds on. She deserves to be odds on because her market danger is Alba Flora. Now, I backed Alba Flora anti post each way. I mean, we were all thinking at this time that Snowfall would end up in the champion stakes. And, yeah, and you want some, um, you're thinking the, the juice and back well, to Ascot will suit. Yeah, I mean, that, that'll suit Al Alba Flora. I think she'll get closer than she got at York, but she had four lengths and Snowfall was winning ease down. Mm. So it needs Snowfall to run below par again, but she has run below par now on her last two starts. Mm. Since she's so gone up against older horses and males. Has, has she just flattened out a little mm. bit? Alba Floor has been laid out for this race specifically. They know how well, how well she goes at Ascot. Um, so I think as long as the dead eight arrive, you can have, you know, it's a virtual free bet each way at around a five to one. She mark. absolutely hosed up in the Buckhound Stakes, didn't she, on her return? And if she comes back to that form, watch that back again. You can do it in your members' club on the replays. She's going to be coming in, I think. I put Snowfall up just because the race is making me have a headache. If I was there, Kiels, I'd be with you at the bar without question during this <laughs> one. Shouting at home. Pat Cooney, are you sensing a defeat here too? Well, you, you should be really, shouldn't you? I mean, I mean, again, you can think, oh, I don't know, we can get a beat. The more I look at it, you know, there's that old phrase, kiss, keep it simple. She's got £10 in hand, and this is karma waters for her. Is she progressing? No, not really. The form book says she's not. Uh, but she doesn't have to run to her best form to win this race. I, I get Alba Flora, very impressive early on in the year over the course and distance. But you just keep coming back. Snowfall, at least £10 in hand over the opposition. She could run below par again and get away with it this time. I expect her to win, to be honest. Yeah, OK. I think the track will suit her as well, won't it? Will the cream rise in the filly of mares? 3.10. 
Oh, this is the one a lot of you have been waiting for. Palace Pier versus Baid. Or is there something else lurking, Pat Cooney, in the QE2? Yeah, uh, Palace Pier is on pace to be favoured over Baid. I think with Baid, he, he wasn't that impressive for me last time out when he won in uh, France. Palace Pier, we know what he's all about. He wins Group 1s for fun. So Baid, he has to come out and prove it. Again, other horses are being popular from an each-way angle. Marshal of the Seas brings the three-year-old classic form to the table, and he has been the each-way order of the race during the week. And the Revenant, of course, he won the race last year in front of Palace Pier, and I thought he was a tenderly ridden eye-catcher in uh, an arc day. Um, One way the, put no it. denying the, <laughs> the pair of them have uh, <laughs> bits to do against the main two in the market. I prefer Palace Pier over Baid. Uh, but I wouldn't be shy about backing a marshal of the seas or the revenant each way, really, in the race, because Palace Pier, he has had an interrupted campaign. He, he won in France last time out, which was an excellent line of form, but connections were, weren't sure he was 100%. Uh, I'm sure he will be this time around. But again, I wouldn't be afraid of backing horses each way in this race. This is the beauty of this race, guys, isn't it? Thanks, Pat, for that. that uh, if it hadn't been for Mishriff, right, guys, can we agree that Palace Pier would have probably been stepped up to a mile two? Quite possible. So, uh, the, my question is to you both, is Palace Beer quick enough to see off Baid with the drying ground over a mile these days? Am I right or wrong in that? It's a discussion that I'm pretty sure will be right. I have a feeling Baid turning out to be overrated. Uh, I thought he made a meal out of winning a bad Moulin. Uh, the next three home have all been thrashed since. Uh, so I'm not convinced about him at all. I'm not convinced that Palace Pier is an end of season horse. I don't think he, I'm not 100 percent sure that he holds his form throughout the season. The wheels really came off in this last uh, year. It came it? off in this race last year, and you know when he won the Queen Anne. I mean, it's, it's his third start of the year, and it's only in June. When he won the Queen Anne, he only beat Lopi Fernandez by a length and a half, and he made a meal out of do, doing that as well. Now, if you said to yourself, All right, beating Lopi Fernandez a length and a half, that's that's the that's the bit of form to pin your hopes on, yeah. then you say no, no, so, no, thank you very much. So does he really like Ascot Straight Track? Because his only other run on the straight track, he got beat by the Revenant. So okay, listen, I might be clutch, I might be clutching at straws, but I think this is a far more open race than than, than it looks. Now we've heard. Pat mentioned uh, the Revenant. You uh, you sneered through that. Uh, well, I mean, it's unlike me to have. Uh, it's unlike to, unlike me to get involved at short odds. But I had a decent double on the Revenant and True Shan in oh. Paris on, on on day one, <laughs> and he got one of the worst rides you will ever see. His closing splits were amazing, but he still couldn't get there. Did he turn the air blue he in was, Paris yeah, by any chance? He was giving, oh, oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I bet there were people out there going, "I was near him." Actually, mm, it was it was, yeah, it was there shocking. Were, there were plenty of bombs going around. I, know, I, can, I can tell you, uh, you know. But anyway, anyway, he, you know his his finishing efforts. Tells you he's at least as good as he was, definitely. Yeah. Like you know, I mean, so he's a player. But I also like Master of the Seas. Uh, you know, he brings that Guinness form now. Paratic player only got beaten in the neck by Palace Pier in France, uh, and only beat um, Master of the Seas a short head uh, at Newmarket. Then obviously it went wrong for Master of the Seas after that. We didn't see him until the Challenge Stakes when. He, I thought he shaped like the best horses in the race. A lot of people were saying that was an ill-judged ride from mm, Buick. Right. He got into a bit of trouble. Charlie Appleby was at pain, uh, pain to stress how much he needed it. He was yeah. reportedly done a really good piece of work recently, and they've been the, they've been the headgear. Uh, so it's very, it's just a very interesting horse. Now, last two winners, the Revenant was having only a second run of the year. Uh, he was fresh. King of Change had run second in the Guineas. Uh, had his problems, bought back one run, and then came here. Yeah. So you know, and there is a history, particularly in, in this race, of horses being fresh and coming to it. Now I know you could say that Palace Pier is also fresh because he's been off since August, but I think I, I think Master C's has just been it's just been the plan to get him back for this race. And if he's good enough, he's going to be a massive player. I'm not convinced Palace Pier is going to run to his form. I'm no longer convinced Baid as good as everyone thinks he is. Yeah, I think if you're the Baid backers out there, Parker, you're not wanting to hear about the fresh angle that Keels is going in. I was going to counter back with, you know, a backhander about Palace Beer not being seen since August, so I think I will. And I can see the poster boy atoning for the defeat in this. I mean, the, the wheels literally came off last year, didn't they? He, you know, he was slipping about it, it, was, it was his first run since uh, the Jacques Lamar out of last year as well. It's not like he'd been kept really... But he good. lost the shoes and that, didn't he? This heavy ground, he was spinning oh, listen, over. Mate, you, you think that's a terrible you excuse? You go through the... Totally, yeah, awful one, one, it was, <laughs> one, one, it was heavy in France and all this nonsense about shoes. You go and look at the Racing Post website and click on any horse. I guarantee you, within three runs, it would say, vet report he lost a shoe. It happens all the time. I think it was both shoes, wasn't it? Race, or race, like, like, both race courses must be absolutely covered in shoes. 
Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know whether they melt them down and make okay. them again or whatever. It must make, make, make an absolute That's fortune. where they get them from to sell, right? I get it, all right. If blacksmiths aren't doing their job, they just come <laughs> off ridiculously easily. There's a rant from Kills as well. Obviously, look, look I, I, like, I like I'm taking on Bade, so I think Palace Pier will just win. I am a fan of Master of the Seas. I can see that. The Revenant, not for me. Yeah, I think I think it is out the top two in the in the market. Um, I, like Pat, I, I wasn't overly thrilled with Bade's performance last the time. Order of Australia. Yeah, um, I go off my first impression a lot, and it wasn't. I, I watched it back. He won. A, he did win pretty easily. Um, I, I just think Palace Pier is one of these horses that <sighs> he looks like he needs a bit further. I think it'd be good enough to beat these. I don't think it's that strong a race. Um, I just think that his level of form is a bit better. I can get the angle. He was very impressive in the lock inch, and he's progressively got. He's less annoying impressive. like this when you do these shows with him. You, you, you really fancy one, and he'll probably get, he'll put you off it. I wouldn't say I really fancy it, but again, out cases for absolutely hopeless uh, horses sometimes. Though. And it is yeah, this yeah. meeting, guys. Let's face it. There are a lot of seismic upsets, but will there be them when the ground is good? 350, it's the big one. The crown and the jewel, the champion stakes. Ten runners set to go to post. Pat Cooney, who's hot, who's not? Uh, at current prices, Mystery if is stronger at his price than Adair is at his one. And I don't know, Tom has said before that, you know, visually last time out. And I go visually last time out. Mishri, when he won the Judmont, I wasn't really fully on his bandwagon. But when he won the judgment by the long looking six lengths over the 10 furlongs, I just thought, oh, wow, he might just be unbeatable at this kind of a trip, the 10 furlongs. Go back to Ascot in July. A day I beat him handily enough by a length and three quarters. That was over a mile and a half. The Petra was at naught with a furlong to go for Mishriff. So I, I kind of respect the run by th that day, but uh, I'm more inclined to judge Mishriff on his 10 furlong form, which I think is outstanding. And his last time out run was excellent. And Mr. Gosden has always been quick to say, yeah, Mishriff here. He could have flirted with going to the Ark maybe, but no, he's here at Ascot. With Adair, he ran two weeks ago, didn't he? Not often Charlie Appleby backs them up quick enough. But did he have a hard race? Well, I'm not so sure he did. You know, he got to the front and William Butte was trying to slow the pace down for a lot of the trip. It was an honourable run to finish fourth. Connections have said if he stays in training, they'll have no problem at all dropping down to 10 furlongs. Very much a player. But of the two, Mishriff looks exceptional based on his 10 furlong form. An interesting runner, Dubai Honor. He won our, one of our Bet365 handicaps at Newmarket in July for marker 93. I can't believe he can beat 127 rated horses, but they did supplement him during the week. So he's now 116. Presumably he's working like a 120. -er. It'll be easy enough in the market because it's just not there in the form book. But he's very much a wild card. He'll win in oh, July of 93. Can't see it myself. I'll go for Mishriff based on the Judmont. Mishriff is an absolute certainty here, isn't he? Yeah, probably. Wouldn't it be great if you can Glen won, though? It's <laughs> first ever run in the Group 1. <laughs> you can Glen. Well, oh, marvellous horse. I love him. Yeah. But no, uh, yeah, seriously. Uh, yeah, now, I, you know, look, that Judmont International fell apart. We had non stars in it, and it was just, you know, it, you know I wouldn't, I would not get too carried away about that. But it's still a very high class piece of form, and he's a high class one mile, two furlong horse, yeah. and he's been prepared for this race. And a day are, I mean, he made the money, and the horses went past him. So, did he finish tired? Let's look Probably. At, the let's look at the next thing, Kills. He's he's come up against a Dave twice. Once in this race last year, when he stank in the betting and just clearly wasn't right. Also on his return in the Eclipse, where he probably mm. did need it. So it's two nil a Dave. And also he's, stank in the betting. Yeah. So well, no, no, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens in in the betting uh, on Saturday. And he's won against the Day R as well in the King uh, George, yeah. who's also beaten him. So why are we thinking this is a certainty? Uh, be, you know, because of that visual impression problem. I think I think if there is a of the day is him. He obviously handles Ascot fine because that's second in the King George. I mean, he was running, he was running all over a, a day. Or at least he looked at uh, two furlongs out, didn't it? So, yeah. so I don't think there's, I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any track issues. Uh, I, don't, I think he, he is possibly a horse that comes right and goes wrong. Uh, hence, like you know, weak in the betting and, and then stinks. Like, you know what I mean? Because I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's much of a ground issue with him at all. So, you know, I think if he's on his A, if he's on his A, if he's on his A game, he win. Yeah. Uh, I can see how they are blowing out, and it's quite possible that he just finished tired in the art because it was heavy ground. He made mm. the run, and the horses went, horses went past him. A day will run his race. 
But uh, interesting that Haggis has um, supplemented. You know, it must have been a discussion about it. Well, you know, he's at least as good as a day, sort of thing. You know what I mean? You were there that day as well. It's proper turn of foot in a steadily run race, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. Mm. It's interesting. It's, but... Yeah, and he won, really, he won really readily as well. But are we again, agreeing for the first time on the show? France. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing. Uh, you know, me, I, you know, I do my best to take on every single fav that I can, but, you know, you've got to have sound reasons for doing so. And I'm not really strong enough on opposing mischief. People will be thinking, oh, I'm all over a day. I'll come on, make the case. I'll throw in the idea argument. Um, I just think that I, I thought it was a perfectly good run in, in the art. If you take that run away, I know it's two weeks ago, but you can't just say that any horse that runs in the art, that's a very easy stick to keep beating them with. Um, he missed his prep for that as well, didn't he? He beat Mishriff. I know it was over two furlongs, probably a, the trip suited a day or a little bit more, but then after the arc, everyone's saying, oh, well, a day is going to a better 12 furlong horse. Hurricane Lane's the mile and a half horse yeah. this season. So, Native trail Caribas, we've already had it, haven't we, with these two? Maybe we're just making too much of a deal. A day has already beaten Mishriff. Are we surprised he's running here? He's never won over a mile two, has he? I know he's been nutted over it, but and he needed two runs to start as a, as a three-year-old. So here's my theory with that AR. See if, see if I'm wrong about it, see if you agree. I think he probably needs a run. That was my worry about him going into the arc. I thought that, you know, he turned himself inside out in the, in the derby, didn't he? Should Hurricane Lane have beaten him that day? I don't know, maybe. But it, we've seen what he can do, this guy. But he's never run over 10 furlongs. I'm surprised he's here, because they said he, they're both, him and Hurricane Lane, top in the classic four year olds. Yeah, yeah, but it's still, that's the classic trial at Sandown, isn't it? You know, yeah. you're talking about, if you watch back, like, like Kills mentioned, that mm. King George, two furlongs out, Mr. has him stone cold. He's seven pound worse off. Exactly. Well. But why is he here? They could have just put him away, couldn't they, for that four-year-old career? They said straight after the arc, the impression was, both two proper four-year-olds in the making. I don't want to be cynical, but are we going to see him next year? I think they've already said I, yes. No, I think but why is he running here saying, then? Yeah. Has he, so basically, if he's running here and you want to be with him, you've got to believe at home he's done something remarkable. Well, you've also got to believe that you know, it's Champions Day and Godolphin won a one in the ah, now, and there's also it could be that symbol. And their jockey is also going for the title, oh, right? He's going for the title, yeah. So, so is he yeah. like, sorry, Bolshoi Ballet fans, but is he a Bolshoi Ballet? <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> They've got to have a run of haven't they, Cornwall? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah it I is mean, a great yeah. debate, isn't it? It's <sighs> fascinating he's here. I think... Uh, uh, yeah, this is, an, this is, this is, this is my, my minor negative for Snowfall, just going back a little bit. They were going to run a her here. But a day has they found out there's an easier race to run in, so they don't really believe that she could have won the champion stakes. Yeah, they, they don't. No, of course not. like an easy autumn campaign, so to speak. He missed yeah, it. Yes. So that, he's yeah. entitled to probably... You think he's going to win, don't you? I think he there's might no come reason. on for that arc no run. Reason. There's no reason not to run him. I mean, there is every chance that he'll come on for it. Yeah. But, I mean, can, he, I, can I just throw trouble. a curveball out, because I will be having a bet on this horse. You can Glenn. Um, <laughs> First group one for you, can. And he will either win on the bridle or he will come there tanking on the bridle. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Absolutely nothing. But I, ca I will be back in Al Arzi. You've um, got a strange relationship with this horse. I do, time, yeah. I mean, I remember messaging him earlier in the season saying, oh, all set for Art Day. You were on the 40s or something, weren't you? 51, yeah. yeah. Um, I, there's just something about. Uh, he is. Ah, uh, he's frustrating because you know that he's going to come there swinging on the bride. Not even the gelding operations worked. <laughs> yeah, like the. What did he go one twenty on the exchanges? Didn't he? You're like, you know, really slow, really, really low in running, didn't he? The old solid stone, my favourite. God, I mentioned him. I was he happy saw to him off. Him, like he, he'd done it a couple of times, and I was saying, oh, I just, he might just get it right in the arc, and then the gelding. Oh, well, that's that one then. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. The, the running him in this, um, they obviously think he's. He has got talent. Like, yeah. there's no... And if he just decides one day... You like that, a flashy traveller, though. I love a flashy traveller. <laughs> we've got to wean you he off. Is. He also is the first person regular viewers will know to start making barking sounds about him. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Aggies, but he has looked a little soft, hasn't he? He does throw a bit of a tantrum at the finish, yeah. Oh, a tantrum. There you go. There, That is a fan. Um, yeah. I, I, I will. And at a price. If Tom Scales put him up as well in the price-wise, as he posts? Yeah, I can just... I could... See, I think if he wins, he probably wins. So impressive that everyone thinking, who is this... Where's this horse been all season? But, um, yeah, 25 to 1. He's talented if he decides to... Yeah, I've given plenty of chances, I have to say, but I'll be giving him one more in the hope that if he does throw the towel in, then they might try something else with him. Just when Parkey was playing his debut and what a shout with a straight bat, he bowls us a googly. OK, weekend winner's time then. Surely we're all tipping at Ascot, right? We're all knocking one out of the park. Keels, there's better be one man that's hey, not, right? There's always going to be one man. But it won't be me. I will be. I, I will be. I'm yeah. going to go hard and heavy in the opener 
Uh, Ascot, Baron Samady, I can get the front two in the market, Pete. He's a crack in each way bet. I think he may well win. Oh, the last time he did that was accident. I agent, do you remember? You were on Ascot, we were all head in hands because Kills had managed to find the Skinner somehow. Uh, Nap, biggest bet of the week for you, biggest hope? Minzal in the sprint. Um, Lovely. Really like him. Yeah, okay. I'm going to keep it simple. The Shrift for me, Mishrift, just wins. Pat Cooney, what do you like at Ascot? <laughs> uh, warm weather and a couple of, uh, you know, <laughs> glass of pims. My nap, though, runs also in a group race, a group three at Leopardstown, a group three at uh, 315 Leopardstown, Glownthorne. Now, we ran in the Dewhurst at Newmarket a week ago. Yes, we were talking about Corribus, native trails, etc. He finished sixth. He was only beaten about six lengths. He stumbled coming out the stalls. He didn't get too much of a clear run. A perfectly honourable run. That was a group one. This is a group three. Aidan O'Brien backing him up after a seven-day break. Um, he should be winning this race for me and going on to bigger and better things next year. So I'll be at Ascot, but I'll be glued to the television screen at 3.15. OK, there's your four-timer on Champions Day. There was always going to be one, wasn't there? Well, all we've got time for you then on this weekend's What A Shout. Kills, great to have you back in. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. My regular sparring partner. Off to Ascot tomorrow. Uh, yeah, OK, right, yeah, I'm just going. proper jolly. Uh, yeah, hopefully the champagne will be flowing. It all depends on how expensive it is compared to how cheap it was in, in France. Oh, right, OK, yeah, yeah, all right. Already putting that one out there. So there's enough staff to serve you. That's been a story. It's been great having Parky here, hasn't it? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah it's been good fun. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I loved it. All about the big jump off. All done now. Sit back, watch it come out. Not quite. Not quite all done, but just about there. Um, yeah, unfortunately, you won't be able to join Keels at the bar at uh, Ascot tomorrow. But um, yeah, it should be really, really good. So um, yeah, fingers crossed. Everyone we'll definitely really get you it. back through the jump season, Parky, if you don't mind. Yeah, top man. Great stuff. Great to have Tom Park with us. Great to have you with us. Great to have Pat Cooney with us, of course, as ever. Enjoy Ascot tomorrow, where you will also be. Uh, I'm Ascot Saturday. I'm going to go to Kempton on Sunday. Small fields, fast ground. Might not learn too much, but you've got the likes of Silver Street turning up. And you've really got to start getting my head around these National Hunt horses. So a uh, good place to start. Uh, Kempton Park, Sunbury on Thames on Sunday. I'll sneak along there myself. Oh, you're, oh, you're going to do a double, <laughs> are you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We'll be finding out whether they got a box now as well. That's an absolute certainty. All right, what a pleasure this has been. Great time to be on Planet Earth because it's Champions Weekend. Let's hope you've enjoyed it. Get your feedback in for the panel below. You know the script by now, you regulars. Of course, don't forget to download the free Must Have Racing Post app. You do that on the App Store, the Google Play Store itself. Don't forget, gamble responsibly. That's what it's all about. There's loads of sport out there. For myself, Dave Orton, enjoy it. <laughs>